an introduction to Reflect It. Reflect It adds an attractive, shiny, and reflective finish option to any of DriveIt's adhesively attached outsulation systems when a simulated metal panel appearance is desired, reducing construction costs while improving energy efficiency compared to alternatives. DriveIt's reflective pearlescent appearance comes in a variety of colors. Custom colors are available with approximately three weeks lead time. This training series will provide information on techniques for generating the best application of Reflectit. It is important to ensure that each step is executed to the best of your ability before moving on to the next application step. The smallest application error can make a dramatic difference in the finished product. The steps for installing the Reflectit coating are to prepare equipment and tools understand site conditions and staging, install the system up to the reinforced base coat, apply skim it, apply color prime, and apply reflect it. Prior to starting any project, a mock-up should be produced by the chosen applicator under the project conditions with the tools and equipment that will be used on the project. A mock-up will serve as the basis for approval and will establish the required aesthetic standard for the project. If you have additional questions or concerns, please contact your DriveIt representative. Step 1. Equipment and Tools For application of Reflectit, the following equipment and tools are needed in addition to normal plastering trade tools used to install DriveIt's outsulation systems. Binks 2001 or 2100 spray gun with 66SS fluid nozzle and a 66SD air nozzle. Binks dual regulated pressure tank. 12-foot air and fluid hoses, preferably clear hose for the fluid supply. Plastic tank liners from Binks. Air compressor with a minimum of 12 CFM. Roll Air Systems model number 6590 HK18 that achieves 13.1 CFM at 100 PSI is one example. Air nozzle to assist in cleaning and removing debris. Number 4 Zon Cup. Fine or very fine drywall sanding blocks. Sanding blocks that come to a point are preferred. Router with appropriate bit or hot groove tool that will cut consistent and sharp joint profiles. Rubbing stone with fine surface. Rubber gloves. Paint strainers. Paint stir sticks. Terry cloth towels. Chalk line. Use of white chalk is preferred. Site influence and staging. Prior to starting any project, all site influences should be considered and addressed. For application of Color Prime and Reflect It, the following conditions are needed. Avoid spraying Color Prime and Reflect It on windy days to avoid getting product on unprotected areas. Examples of aesthetic issues that can develop when spraying in windy conditions are tiger striping, mottled appearance, inconsistent appearance, and a sandpaper-like texture. Air and surface temperatures must be at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius and must remain so for a minimum of 24 hours. Avoid spraying onto a surface that is over 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius as spraying over hot surfaces will cause reflectant to dry too quickly, reducing the glossy and smooth appearance desired. Do not underestimate weather challenges. Spray in the shade, and when spraying on sunny days, shade the wall using nursery shade cloth or other appropriate methods. Most projects will require some type of tenting or shading protection during the spray application. Careful thought should be given to the location placement of scaffold safety attachments to the building structure. Ideally, they should be located in expansion joints or punched openings to eliminate the need for patching later. In most cases, scaffolding sidearm brackets are utilized until the spray application occurs. They are then removed as the spray gun must be held a minimum of 16 inches or 0.4 meters from the wall surface being sprayed. The use of scissor or boom lift would prevent the use of tenting and or shade protection during the spray application process. It may limit options for providing proper protection for freshly sprayed walls, therefore may limit your number of days for spray application. Substrate Preparation Installing EPS Foam 
base coat, and mesh. Reflected finish is only recommended over an adhesively attached system. The use of reflected over mechanically attached systems could result in the fasteners ghosting or appearing through the finish. DEFS or cement board MD type systems would have similar issues. The substrate should be thoroughly examined to determine if the planar issues exist. Any issues found must be addressed at this time. Planar irregularities can dramatically impact the desired final aesthetics when using Reflectit. Panel sizing must follow the guidelines for Reflectit. We recommend a maximum of 5 foot by 5 foot and or 25 square feet with the vertical height not being more than 5 foot panels and a minimum panel size of 2 foot by 2 foot panels. Each step of the installation influences final appearance and this includes sticking the EPS foam. Use a straight edge to ensure the EPS foam and wall surface is flat and true. All wall surfaces must be properly rasped and leveled. All natural eye attractors must be checked with a chalk line to ensure they are straight and true. We recommend V-type joints with consistent width, depth, and crisp edges. Any irregularities should be corrected before moving forward. When specified, Panzer mesh should be installed at this time and allowed to dry for 24 hours. Once dry, install standard mesh and base coat to fully embed the mesh. Use detail mesh to treat and prepare all aesthetic joints. Skim coat of base coat. Because the reflected spray finish will not mask surface imperfections, it is necessary to skim out the base coat a second time with additional base coat. Drivitz Primus, Genesis, Primus DM, Genesis DM, Genesis DMS base coats can be utilized to obtain a flat and level surface. Refer to the appropriate Drivit product data sheet for mixing instructions and application. To achieve sharp corners, use the cut method for applying the second coat of base coat. Do one side of all aesthetic joints and the returns. Once the previous application has set, do the remaining side of each joint and return. Complete the skim coat process by skimming the face of each panel with the goal of making the base coat as smooth as possible. A rubbing stone with a very fine surface may be needed to achieve the best results and remove imperfections before applying the second coat of base coat. You may use a plastic float to densify the surface of the base coat. For a proper finish, no mesh pattern or color can be visible at this point. After the skim coat has dried, each of the panel surfaces should be checked for surface imperfections such as blemishes, cat faces, unstraight corners, before proceeding to the next step. This is the most important step in achieving an acceptable final aesthetic with the reflected finish. To prevent particles from clinging to the wall surface and impacting the reflected finish, all construction debris must be removed before moving to the next phase of the installation. Application of Skimit Once the base coat is completely dry and all surface imperfections have been fixed, you're ready to apply two coats of Skimit. Skimit is designed to make the sandpaper-like texture of the dry base coat smooth. It's not intended to correct base coat imperfections. Skimit is orange in color to assist in seeing imperfections on the surface when sanding and creates a very smooth texture over the base coat. Start by using a clean hand brush to remove all surface dust and dirt. Mix Skimit as noted in DS483. Apply Skimit similar to a very thin and even level 5 skim coat. The base coat should be visible through Skimit. Depending on environmental conditions at the time of application, Skimit can be sanded 15 to 30 minutes after it is applied. Skimit should be sanded with a fine or very fine drywall sanding sponge block using a circular motion similar to sanding EPS. Sanding Skimit in a straight line or a pattern can result in unwanted ghosting in the final reflected finish. 
Once the sanding process is complete, the surface should be brushed with a hand brush and then wiped with a damp terry cloth towel to remove all surface dust. Apply the second coat of skimmit by repeating the previous process. The maximum thickness of skimmit is 1 32nd of an inch. Upon completing the second coat of skimmit, allow the surface to fully dry for at least 24 hours. Spray application of Color Prime. Color Prime should be mixed in accordance with DS410. Color Prime comes from Drive It in a roller applied viscosity. Therefore, water must be added to achieve a spray applied viscosity. Start by checking the viscosity prior to the addition of water. Begin adding water and use a number 4 Zon cup to check the viscosity until the Color Prime's viscosity is between 25 to 35 seconds. The amount of water added to the initial pails must be recorded to ensure color and viscosity consistency of all future pails. Thus, the same amount of water must be added to each pail of Color Prime to prevent color issues. Prepare the Binks Equipment and 12 CFM Compressor. A minimum 12 CFM compressor at 80 PSI is required. Utilize plastic liners from Binks to keep the tank clean and easily remove any remaining materials. The Binks tank should be kept clean, dry, and rust-free at all times. Once the liner is placed in the pressure pot, a paint strainer shall be utilized to strain the color prime as it is poured in. Straining the color prime prevents dried materials and other particles from plugging the spray tip. Next, install the tank lid and tighten as required. Hook the air hose from the compressor to the spray tank. Back off the air to both the fluid and material flow gauges so they read zero when the compressor is started. Start the compressor. Hold the spray gun over an empty pail with the gun trigger compressed and slowly increase the fluid flow pressure until material flow is established. Hold the spray gun level and adjust the fluid flow pressure to where the color prime material leaves the fluid tip straight for 7 and 1 half inches, then drops off. Adjust the air pressure on the tank to 40 psi and evaluate the spray pattern making adjustments as needed. The spray pattern must be an oval shape. The spray gun should be positioned at least 16 inches away from the wall surface at all times. Aesthetic issues can develop if the spray gun is positioned closer than 16 inches from the wall surface. To ensure a more consistent final appearance, a cross-hatch spray pattern should be utilized in spraying color prime. As mentioned in previous steps, ensure that scaffolding allows proper access to the surface. Make sure the wall is completely dry and pay careful attention to wind, direct sunlight, rain, and avoid spraying in these conditions. We recommend tenting, shading, and protecting the wall surface area to reduce these concerns. Based on specific project design, individual panels may need to be protected to prevent overspray. Upon completion of spraying the color prime, the equipment must be properly cleaned and dried off to prevent rust from developing, material from clogging the equipment, and other potential issues. Allow the color prime to dry for a minimum of 12 hours and use a moisture meter to verify the color prime is completely dry before moving forward. Review wall to ensure that dried color prime is uniform in appearance. Make corrections if necessary before proceeding with application of Reflect It. Spray application of Reflect It. The spray application of Reflect It is exactly the same as the spray application of color prime except for four key differences. One. Reflect it should be mixed in accordance with DS705. 2. Reflect it requires two crosshatch coats, whereas Color Prime only requires one crosshatch coat. 3. Reflect it should not be applied to surfaces that will receive sealant. Only Color Prime should be used in these instances. 4. Reflect it requires at least 24 hours to dry whereas Color Prime requires at least 12 hours to dry.
Please refer to Step 6, Spray Application of Color Prime for a recap of the proper spray application method. As a recap, the key steps are 1. By measuring and recording water added to the initial pail of reflectant and using a number 4 Zon cup to achieve a viscosity of 25 to 35 seconds. 2. Prepare Binks equipment and install clean liners in the pressure pot and add reflect it through a strainer and tighten the lid. 3. Attach the air hose from the compressor to the spray tank and set gauges to read zero, then start the compressor. 4. Hold the gun level over an empty pail and establish a straight material flow of 7 and 1 half inches before it drops off. 5. Set the air pressure to 40 psi and adjust settings until you have an oval shape spraying no closer than 16 inches from the surface. 6. Spray using a crosshatch pattern. 7. Allow first crosshatch coat of Reflect It to dry to the touch and then apply the second coat of Reflect It. Please refer to the previous step for more detailed instructions on the spray application method.